When I left off, we were at step 6, configuring OSPF version 3 on R2 and R3. So what we've set up is a network that we have here, and routers R1, R2, and R3 are sharing routing table information with each other using OSPF version 2 using IPv4 addresses. But we also have an IPv6 network, and we want to use OSPF to share our IPv6 routes between R2 and R3. We have an IPv6 network up here that goes all the way up to PC4. This is a test network for IPv6, and R3 needs to share this information with router R2, and we're going to do it using OSPF version 3 for IPv6. Now up here in step 6 on my packet tracer activity it says configure OSPv6. That should be OSPF version 3 for IPv6 on R2 and R3. So it tells us here in the instructions exactly what to do, so let's get it going. So for R3, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into R3. I'll get to global config mode, IPv6, router, OSPF, and then we need to pick a process ID. We used a process ID of 1 when we set up OSPF version 2 for IPv4. This time we're going to use the number 10, and it says so in the instructions that I listed right here. IPv6 OSPF process ID 10. So now that we've done that we need to put in the router ID and put on some passive interfaces. So let's do that next. So I'll move this over here and I'll stretch this out so we have a little room. Router dash ID 3.3.3.3 and then we'll set up passive interfaces out of our LAN interfaces, our LAN facing interfaces, because we do not need to send OSPF protocol information to our LANs. So we'll say passive, I'll hit the tab key, interface, gigabit 0 slash 0, and passive interface, gigabit 0 slash 1. And we're done with setting up the initial router OSPF process for IPv6. To actually activate networks on this IPv6 router OSPF process, we do that from the individual interfaces. This is different from OSPF version 2 where we would put in, a, let's say, a network command and then put in our network like 192.168.1.0 and then put in wildcard bits. We don't do that with OSPF version 3. We activate the networks that we want to advertise from the interfaces. So I'll show you what I mean type in end and let's advertise this network right here that's on gigabit 0 slash 0 this interface right here so what I'll do is say conf t interface gigabit 0 slash 0 type in ipv6 ospf the process ID of 10 and then the area number this is single area OSPF so the area needs to be area 0. Alright, we've now activated OSPF version 3 on our gigabit interface and now this network right up here will be advertised to router R2. Now we also have an IPv6 network between R2 and R3 which we're also going to need to advertise. So, or include in our OSPF process. So let's do that interface next. That is serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. So I'll type int serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. Hit enter. And I'll do the up arrow. IPv6 OSPF 10 area 0. It's the exact same command. And when I do it, you can see I'm surprised with a message. It says OSPF version 3. No IPv6 enabled on this interface. So it's telling me that there's no IPv6 on this interface. Well, there should be, because we were supposed to configure an IPv6 address on this interface and also on this interface over here on R2. So let's take a look at our configuration and see what's going on. I'll do a control C on my keyboard, show run to look at the running configuration, and we'll take a look. We'll go down to our serial interface. Here it is serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 has an IPv4 address but in fact it does not have the IPv6 address 
the global unicast IPv6 address or the link local IPv6 address so it looks like we forgot to configure it or I forgot to configure it. So let's do that right now. I'll go to the diagram here on the topology and over to R3 and you can see that indeed we're supposed to have an IPv6 address on serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 and you can see 2001 db dca 2 slash 64 and FE80 colon colon 3 link local. So let's put that in right now. Conf T, interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1, and we'll start off here IPv6 address, and we'll do the link local first, FE80 colon colon 3 space link dash local. So that puts the link local address on the interface and now we'll put in the global unicast address 2001 colon db8 colon dc colon a colon colon 2 slash 64 the network prefix. So now we have IPv6 addressing on the interface and let's see if we can now activate OSPF for IPv6 on that interface. Okay, so IPv6, OSPF, process 10, area 0, we hit enter and we don't get an alert message and it takes it. Alright, so now we've activated the OSPF version 3 for IPv6 protocol and we're advertising this network also to other IPv6 routers on the network. We also need to do one other thing and I'll look to the instructions to show you. The way I set this up, we also need to set up an IPv6 default route out of serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. So we can do that here also. So I'll hit exit, type exit, and then IPv6 route. This is a static route. So we'll put it colon colon for all zeros, slash 0. So this is like a quad 0 route in IPv4. And serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. So this is a default route or gateway of last resort going out of serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. And so that's done. So we're all good with router R3 now. And what we need to do now is move on to R2. So for router R2, let's take a look at the instructions. We're going to set up the same OSPF version 3 process, uh, process ID of 10. We're going to set the router ID. We're going to have passive interfaces coming out of the serial interfaces pointed to R1 and the serial interface pointing to the internet cloud over here. So we'll only be advertising our IPv6 routes out of serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. And that makes sense because we don't want to send OSPF information to router R1 if there's no IPv6 networks between R1 and R2 and we don't want to advertise OSPF to our ISP internet service provider in the internet cloud because they're not part of our internal organization or network. So let's set this up right now and we also need to double check that IPv6 addresses are indeed configured on serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. So I'll open up the router, drag this over here to give us a little more room. Type EN to get to privileged user mode, conf T to get to global configuration mode, and we'll start off with IPv6 router OSPF and the process ID of 10. We'll set the router ID to 2.2.2.2, and we need to set up our passive interfaces. passive interface and we need to know which one they are again so we'll take a quick look here serial 000 and 010 are going to be passive serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and passive interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 so that's it for the initial router OSPF commands to start the OSPF process we now need to advertise our network going out of serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 pointing at router R3. So to do that, I'll type in end and do a conf t interface 
serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 and IPv6 OSPF process ID of 10 and then area 0. Now I do not get a warning message when in fact I get an OSPF version 3 adjacency looks like we've established a neighbor relationship with router R3 so I must have had IPv6 enabled on the interface and my IPv6 addresses configured so that's pretty good. We'll take a look at the instructions here and it says that configure serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 with IPv6 OSPF 10 area 0 and we also need a default route going out of serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 so that's what we need to do so we have to also set up a default route IPv6 route colon colon slash 0 out of serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 so there is our static default route going out of this interface. Now, I've set up a default route with IPv6 on router R2 because it points to the Internet Cloud, but I did the same thing on router R3. I was supposed to, according to the instructions, put in a static default route going out of the serial interface for IPv6, and that's going to work fine. But a better way to, to have done it would have been to tell R3 that the R2 has a default route out of the network. And we could have done that with this command. I could have done it like this. I could have said IPv6 router OSPF 10 and gone back into the OSPF 10 routing process and put in a RED tab redistribute static command. And that would have told router R3 that I have a default route out of the network so that I didn't have to configure default routes on both routers just on this router and then distribute that default route to the other router so next time I do this lab that's the way I would do it with a redistribute static command but that's okay you don't need to have it it's going to work now it says in the instructions that we should be able to ping the Inatech web servers IPv6 address if everything is working from PC4 so let's see if we can do that so open up PC4 Go to desktop, command prompt, ping 2001 colon db8 colon 2323 colon f colon colon f2. And you can see I'm getting replies, so I'm able to send an echo request and receive an echo reply all the way from PC4 to the Inatech web server past the cloud on the internet at its IPv6 address. So looks like OSPF version 3 is working nicely and R2 and R3 are sharing IPv6 routing information. And now it's time to move on to step 7.